You don't let yourself live for happiness. You just miserable. In just two days, we're going to be giving thanks. But for some, there's an important person missing at the dinner table, their child. Today, we begin a three-part special report, Gone But Not Forgotten. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to INN News. I'm Scott Kinraid. Every 40 seconds, a child goes missing in this country. The search reaches beyond local law enforcement to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, actively working thousands of cases. Whether it's been a week or 10 years, the search continues to reunite the lost with their families. INN's Jenny Wurzberger has the first in a three-part series. Tonight, she takes us inside the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, located just outside of the nation's capital in Alexandria, Virginia. Probably the catalyst for the creation of this center was the abduction and murder of a little boy named Adam Walsh. Dressed up and ready to play ball, his picture hangs on the wall in the lobby of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, a painful reminder of his life that was cut short. 27 years we've been asking, who could take a six-year-old boy and murder him and decapitate him? Who? We needed to know. As a result of Adam's tragic kidnapping and murder in 1981, other parents are getting a glimmer of hope. Parents like Brenda Gordon, her daughter Trudy Appleby, is still missing after disappearing 15 years ago. You don't let yourself live for happiness. You just miserable. I've dedicated my life. To John Walsh, Adam's father and host of America's Most Wanted, teamed up with Ernie Allen and others who launched the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in 1984. We are working the most serious cases, the most dangerous cases, the most long-term cases, and we're working about 15,000 of them a year. Allen, the president and CEO, says the key to their success is communication from coast to coast. We try to create a coordinated national response to these cases, tying together 18,000 American police departments. This has proven to be very successful. In 1990, there was a 62 percent recovery rate, and today, 97 percent of the missing kids are returned safely to their home. What we're doing is creating images of what we think the child looks like today. The children in these pictures have all been age progressed by a team of forensic artists. Them to 16. The successful recoveries provide a remarkable resemblance. Forensic artist Steve Lofton says success stories like J.C. Dugard's makes his job well worth it, and his smile says it all. There's uh, uh, great satisfaction. Every day, average people doing average things and simply paying attention are reuniting families. Over 100 million Americans will receive flyers of missing children in their mailbox every week. And as a direct result, one of every six children are recovered. Allen says it pays to pay attention. Somebody knows. Our goal is to reach into millions of homes and touch millions of people to generate that key piece of information. One thing has remained the same since the very beginning. The data of a long-term missing child is not encouraging. 90% of children who are recovered, either dead or alive, are recovered in the first 24 hours. We know that time is the enemy, and we know that you have to move quickly. But just because a child hasn't been recovered uh, in a week or a month or a year or 15 years does not mean that it's acceptable to assume the worst and stop looking. And tomorrow we'll continue the series with a young girl who went missing nearly 15 years ago. I talked with her family, local law enforcement, and reaction from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. I'm Jenny Wurzberger reporting. Thank you very much, Jenny. The